I'd like to invite someone back to the stage who's been up here. You've seen her earlier, but did you know she trained 18,000 entrepreneurs? So this is unbelievable as far as an accomplishment. She's an author, she's a coach, and ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Carrie and you to lighten us on this topic all about the disparity of higher education. Come on up. Love the lady in white. Welcome to the stage. You're going to stay up here? Great. I'll be Thank back. you so much for having me again, all the amazing entrepreneurs and educators and change makers. So I would like to share the PowerPoint. So today I would like to address um, the doubts into uh, barriers uh, limiting students' access and enrollment in higher education and discuss the actionable solution to narrow the, these parities. So may I have the PowerPoint, please? Okay, so um, I recently uh, published an article on FOB. So this is a QR code on the, the left, left corner. So you can just uh, scan the QR code and you can read the articles on FOB. And this is uh, what I'm doing right now in my business actually is help people to unleash their full potentials, uh, remove limits, and high hyper speed to turn their dreams into reality. So today I would like, I'm so honored to share the topic addressing um, the disparity in higher education access and enrollment. Um, Okay, thank you. Okay. So today we would um, divide into two parts. And the first part is um, I will address um, uh, uh, barriers of limiting student success and enrollment in higher education. And the second part is discuss 10 actionable solutions to narrow the, the uh, disparities. Okay, so the first part, the first part um, that is like a five factors that will affect us. So uh, in order to um, just remove all the limits to help the student to assess enrollment in higher education, that is like a five like areas we have to pay attention to. The first is financial barriers, and second is uh, geographical, cool, and the third part is uh, sociocultural uh, barriers and uh, academic and also political. So the first one is financial um, barriers. The high cost of tuition fee, textbooks, and living expenses expenses makes higher education unaffordable of many students, especially those from the low income families. And this is the, the issue that we have to pay attention in or around the world. And the second is about, uh, can I get back to the, okay, uh, geographical. Geographical is like a limited access to universities and colleges, uh, especially in rural areas, make it difficult for students to enroll in high education institutions. The third barrier is sociocultural. The society, uh, so society just blessed against certain groups such as women, minorities, my generalized communities and limited their access to high education and this is our reality. Next, academic barriers. Higher, uh, high academic requirements such as high grades and standardized test scores may limit access to high education for students who do not meet these requirements, but some of them may be really challenged in some areas. And the fifth point is political. Political instability, conflicts and war can disrupt higher education systems, making it difficult for students to enroll in univers university and colleges. According to uh, UNICO, uh, only one in three young people globally are enrolled in higher education. In sub 
uh, Saharan Africa, only 9% of young people are enrolled in higher education. In many countries, women are less likely to enroll in higher education than men. Efforts to address these barriers have been made, such as the establishment of scholarship programs, the provision of financial aid and tuition fee waivers, and expansion of online and distant learning programs. However, much more needs to be done to ensure equitable access to higher education for all. So this is a statistic from um, the uh, UNICO. So you can see this is uh, the figures that show um, about the education um, negative previous learning experience discourage many adults from participating, participating in adult education. And so um, that's why some of them like discouraged to join, like to further the education, but some of them are limited. So we have to take a look of our educational system right now. Part two, 10 actionable solutions to narrow disparities. The first one, right now we have uh, seen a lot of resources um, on the internet providing free access to online courses. Providing free access to online courses are an excellent way to increase access to higher education, as they can be taken from anywhere in the world. And many top universities offer free online courses and some even offer uh, certificates and degrees. For example, like MIT in US offers free online courses through its open courseware program, which has reached over 200 million learners worldwide. Second, leveraging technology for remote learning. Technology can be used to provide more learning opportunities, allowing students in remote of underprivileged areas to access higher education. For example, University of the People is an online university that offers tuition-free degrees to students around the world. Third, offering scholarships and grants. Scholarships and grants can help students overcome financial barriers to high education. For example, the Gate Millennium Scholarship Program, this provides full scholarship to low-income minority students. And we need more, more of that. Fourth, increasing community college and vocational skills. So this is like uh, one of our speaker mentioned about the community. Community colleges and vocational schools can provide students with affordable and practical education opinion. For example, the City University of New York, CUNY system has a network of community colleges that provide affordable and accessible education to students in New York City. And we can learn from those like a successful um, profile or institution and then copy that model to the, the other corner of the world. Fifth, partnering with local businesses and organizations. Local business and organization can provide support and resources to students, helping them overcome bar uh, barriers to higher education. For example, the National College Access Network partners with businesses and organizations to provide college access programs to underprivileged students. So partnering with local business and organization is a really practical way. Uh, rather than you just um, let, have the fund from the government and others, because when the students or um, those students they have like a experience in the work field and then they learn and then they further the education, this is like a really 
good experience for, for them to uh, enhance their skill set and also can impact to those people or the organization they work with. So this is a really practical way for us to go. Sixth, improving access to information and resources. Providing students with information and resources about higher education can help them make informed decisions about their future. For example, the College Advising Corps plays uh, recent college graduates uh, in high school uh, provide students with information and guidance on the college application process. Seven, addressing socio-cultural and political barriers. So socio-cultural and political barriers can prevent students from assessing higher education. Just like, um, for example, uh, the cultural uh, bias, language barriers, and, and discrimination. To overcome these barriers, affirmative action policies can help level the playing field for underrepresented students in the college admissions process. Also, educational institutions can provide diversity training to staff and students and create a welcoming and inclusive environment for all students. So this is also in the reality that um, because right now um, many uh, groups or like organization uh, like uh, globalized. So the, we have like uh, the staff or the workers uh, come from different backgrounds. And this is also an issue. Sometimes we have bias in different color, race, nationality, and background as well. So this is also an important um, issue that we have to handle um, in order to like actionable like resources or solution for those students. Eight. Increasing funding for research and development, and this is really, really important. So why we can see like, um, those uh, most richest uh, entrepreneur, they will have, like, uh, have a funding, uh, quite big amount of funding in development and research, because this is for humans' future, for humanity. And funding research and development can help improve educational outcomes and create new opportunities for students. Like the National uh, Science Foundation funds uh, research on STEM education, which can help improve STEM education outcomes for students. Also, funding can be allocated uh, towards research on the impact of technology in education and the effectiveness of various educational programs. Nine, creating mentorship and support programs. Mentorship and support programs can provide students with the guidance and support they need to succeed in higher education, and that is very important because actually leaders influence leaders, followers influence followers. So um, the quality of the human being of the leader is really important, and through mentorship, we have not only passed knowledge to the other amazing human being, but it's about the emotion, about your energy, about your experience. So this is also uh, very important. The uh, POSIS Foundation provides mentorships and support to underrepresented students in college. Other educational institutions can create similar programs to help students from all backgrounds succeed in higher education, and these programs can include academic support, career guidance, and personal counseling. Ten, implementing policies to address completion rates. Completion rates are a significant issue in higher education. Policy can be implemented to address this issue, such as providing support and resources to students to help them stay in school and complete their degrees. This can include financial assistance, academic support, and career counseling. Additionally, institutions can create programs to help students transition from college to the workforce. So 
Um, this is like a 10 actionable solution that we can address and apply to um, right now uh, the challenge we face in educational system globally. And uh, providing free access to online courses, leveraging technology for remote learning, offering scholarships and grants, increasing community colleges and uh, vocational skills, uh, partnering, partnering with local business and organizations, improving access to information and resources, addressing socio-cultural and political barriers, increasing funding for research and development, creating mentorship and support programs, and implementing policies to address completion rates are all important ways to address these or of the dispar disparities. By working together to address these issues, we can create a more equitable and just society where everyone has opportunity to assess higher education to achieve their full potential. Thank you so much. Great. Well, thank you. What a great, insightful session. I kept a couple minutes on the clock, so please, I invite you up to the microphone if anyone would like to engage with some questions. She has some great tips here of how to really get involved and move forward. I love that. Forbes cover girl right here. Any questions for her to the stage? The microphone, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Come on up, come on up. We invite this to be engaging. You get up there, you introduce yourself, let us know who you are so we can connect with you. Yeah, good morning. Uh, I'm part of this universe and my name is Kaushik Chatterjee, come from India. And uh, I'm in the business of uh, helping children identify and pursue enjoyable careers. So, uh, you know, we are in the future of education and you were talking about reducing the disparity and technology has always been a means and now we all this AI thing happening where teachers or educators may be complemented or supplemented, we do not know, with AI bots. And schools and experiences may shift to the metaverse. Do you see that? Is it too early for us to take into cognizance? Do we deny it or do we grow with it? Okay, uh, so uh, AI invented by who? Human being. And I know this is like a lot of like uh, discussion um, uh, like among in the society about the AI application in the university or in, in the school. And the thing is, uh, what we think, uh, even the top scientists, uh, is we, if this is a tool, this is a tool, right? No matter how they involve, like some people will say, oh, they will involve like much more. Uh, what I suggest is if like if your role as a parent, if your role as an entrepreneur, if your role as a policymaker, in your role you just think how can I leverage these two to the um, like maximum to the best, and what can I prevent the dangers in my role? Because I am just here, I am just a one of a human being, but we have a super brains a lot of over here, right? Every one of us play different roles in. Uh, in about protection and leverage the tools or resources around us. This is the concept of me. So uh, if we, ha we have here like a university professor, um, the real experience, um, like his school teachers, right? Every one of us also important. The first question I would ask is, ha, huh, AI right now I have, I can assess that. So for my audience or for my students, what can I leverage these two best for them and what I need to protect that. Yeah, because it's like, this is like a really huge question for me. But uh, I think that every one of us is also important, you know, because this is my question, right? How can I unleash and reach my full potential? Every one of us can be a main role in our world, in our network. So the dangerous part, just think about, ha, huh, what can I protect to uh, those follow me or those around me. And the next question is, how can I leverage these two to my network to, to like achieve the best result? Yeah, I hope that I answered your question. <laughs> Great, any other questions? AI is a scary place for some of us. It's going so fast, right? Imagine 
God, when I'm 80, I don't know what I'm going to do. Any other questions for Carrie? Really insightful sessions. If you don't get a chance to talk to her now, talk to her during coffee breaks. There's so many other times. So I'm going to thank her one more time for a great session. Very insightful. Thank you so much, Carrie. Thank you. Who's connected on LinkedIn to Carrie so far?